officially available starting today is the first public beta version of Mac OS 26 alongside all the other updates such as iOS 26, watchOS 26, tvOS 26 among others and what this means is that even though this is technically not the official release it's still a beta it has chances that you know it will contain bugs and issues but it's stable to a degree where apple feels confident enough to release it to the general public so that they can be able to try it out and see what's forthcoming in the next mac os update that's coming later in the fall this year's version is called mac os 26 Taho, and in this video i'm going to be showing you how you can update your mac to the public beta and some of the cool features that this new software update has to offer in order to be able to update the first thing you want to check is your Mac's version so if you click on the Apple logo and go to about this Mac you can see the year as well as your screen size but what we care about most is the year and the chipset that the MacBook has so this one is a 2021 m1 pro macbook pro and so if we go to apple's page about beta.apple.com this is also the same page that you are going to use to be able to create or sign up into the beta program to be able to get mac os 26 public beta if you click on the mac os 26 taho preview you can see by going all the way to the end of the page it gives you devices or macs that are compatible with mac os 26 so as long as your model is listed here then you know that you can get the mac os 26 beta so now if we go to this website which is beta.apple.com the site that we started at it, if you go to where it says sign up if you don't have an apple id but if you do have an apple id you can actually sign in and you basically be able to get the update so once you've already seen this page you now are basically registered and your apple id or apple account is registered to be able to receive beta you should be able to see your profile in the top corner right there now what you can do is close this page and go into your system settings and go to where it says software update and under this section if you have never been on a beta before you will see that there's now a pop-up that will say beta updates and if you click on the little information tab you have the ability to select mac os taho 26 public beta i'm enrolled in both the public beta and the developer beta but if you only seeing the public beta that's because you did what i showed you which is to enroll into the public beta click public beta then done and now you can check for a software update and mac os 26 the first public beta should technically show up the first thing that you're going to notice once your mac restarts is the new welcome screen in addition to the wallpaper as well as the new screensaver but apple has actually made a big change when it comes to mac os 26 and that's because when you go to look for your launch pad it's actually not going to be existing because apple has replaced launchpad with this apps application so this is now what replaces launchpad and when you click on it you can see how this window looks and at the bottom of it it has different subsections that you can basically click if you press the delete button it goes back there's utilities if i just go back there's creativity social entertainment information and others which is more like an ios adoption feature because on the iphone you have the last page that shows you the same category as this and if you scroll up and down there's a lot of changes when it comes to the redesigned application as well as some of the system controls so i did a whole video Video showcasing some of the application with the previous Mac OS that we had with this one which is Mac OS 26 and I'll leave a link to it in the description of this video so remember not to look for launchpad but launchpad has been replaced with this apps app section another thing that's kind of a big deal and 
this year round apple actually adopts it across multiple different platforms including the apple tv and the apple watch which is something that's unique that's because if you open most apple default applications you notice that internally they've been redesigned to adopt this liquid glass theme it's uniform and for example if i open up the apple music application you can see as I move up and down, you notice this media playback bar has some sort of translucency to it. So as I scroll up and down, I can basically read what it says right there, favorites. But keep in mind that the translucency of this version has literally been tuned down a little bit. The first developer beta was more translucent. It was almost like a mirror and sort of. And so this is what you come up to and a lot of the application and system controls you can see like my control center right here how it looks if i move myself out of the way and show you how the control center looks you can see that the icons right here are literally just floating so the transparency or the liquid glass theme carries over not just into the application but also into the different uh, system UI and interfaces that you have. If you go into your system settings and you go to where it says appearance right here, you can see we now have the ability to change icons and widget style. So this is how the default looks. You can see how it looks right here. If I go to the dark ones, you can see how this looks. And if you have different third-party applications such as Photoshop and ChatGPT that you see right here. If, if the developer hasn't implemented this feature into their apps, it's going to be an ISO, but you can see how it tints the icons into dark mode. And also if we go into our app section, you can see that change carried over and you have the ability to select clear. And this is how clear looks. It's almost like a little bit of a ghost mode right there. You can see how the applications change. And if we go into the app section, this is how they look. Now there's another third one, which is tinted. And this one allows you to basically change and choose the color that you want. So you can see the different ascent colors and text highlights that you can choose there which is something that's good or you have the ability to choose auto light and dark in most of these categories which is something that's good for now just to illustrate the changes i'll select the default which is the one that you see right here another thing you're going to see throughout the whole system is animation so you can see like above me as i change the volume and basically change the brightness the animation sort of pops in and pops out the volume as well does the same but as we go throughout the beta stages apple seems to tune up or tune down these the way these animation work which is i guess fine tuning to find the sweet point that a lot of people like but another cool thing that changed with this update has to do with spotlight search so on my keyboard if i hold command plus spacebar just like this you can see spotlight search pops up now it if you want to see spotlight search split into different like subsections like you saw so that you know which ones are the newest if you press command and spacebar and spotlight search pops up once you move your cursor even a little bit it splits into these four sections and those are the application sections these are the file sections and actions as well as clipboard so most of these you can basically be able to search and if i was to just search for like files for example you can see here spotlight search is going to give me the top results for files but remember that spotlight search can be divided into these four different subsections so if i search for files for example and then while this spotlight search window is open and press command and hold one you can see it's searching for spotlight search within the first shortcut of spotlight search which i believe was apps if i go to the second one this is what it shows you can see these are files if i go to the fourth one which are actions you can see what it shows right here and actions basically allow you to assign quick keys so for example if you 
want to add quick keys to download file you can add it right there and if you want to add a quick key to for example delete a file it allows you to do this and if i go to the fourth one which which is command plus four and click on it this is the clipboard if i have things that i've copied and then I want to go back and recopy multiple ones or see my copy history. The clipboard will allow you to do that. So basically, as you can see, Spotlight Search has really been improved. As long as this window is open on Spotlight Search, you can press Command plus one and it will search just the applications. If you press Command plus two, it will search just files. If you press Command plus three, then you're going to get action and command plus four is going to give you basically your clipboard history the control center too received some updates you can see the icons have been changed and at the same time you can literally just click where it says edit and now it gives me the ability to be able to move things around so you can see how it's giving me this option if i want to make the display go up there you can see how now i'm able to move these items and at the same time there's even app actions that you can add including shortcuts which will open it to a wide range of actions so i can choose a shortcut from the ones that i have existing and if i want to create one i can actually create it from my shortcuts app and then when i add this to my control center it will give me the ability to do that which is something that's good you can see they've added many more controls and instead of having to click multiple times now you can add an action so that it saves you time since the control center can be accessed quickly. If you like to generate images using Image Playground, it's now been updated. Now you can intersync your Image Playground generated images with Gen Emoji and you can create with your Gen Emojis different images which is something that's unique and at the same time if you have like a project that you created just like what i have right here you have the ability to choose more styles as well so before we only had two and then apple ended up adding sketch in one of the pointed updates with the previous mac os update but now you can see we have gen emoji which they've added and all options are here including the ability to tap into chat gpt to create images and you can share with chat gpt right there and once you do that you can see the different chat gpt styles so we have any style oil painting watercolored vector anime print including many more which you can add as well so this is something that's good i think it will now prompt me to try and create more images using image playground another thing that i wanted to show you has to do with messages which is what you see right here so the version has definitely been upgraded and the messages background are actually the same as what you set on your iphone so on my iphone if i set a certain background it's going to carry over with my mac at the moment i log in or sign up and you can see how this looks and at the same time when it comes to gen emoji it seems like it now works much faster and the prompts that you generate will show up as actual gen emojis and you can send them to yourself or to a friend and show them what you have created using your artistic designs if you experience issues or bugs there is the feedback assistant app that's here developed by apple and so you can basically sign in and report most of the issues and bugs that you experience so that apple developers can be able to attend to those issues and that's the purpose basically of these betas is to allow the public especially the public beta because if you notice most of the big influencers or youtubers create videos when the public beta comes out because apple wants the public to have their input or say when it comes to these updates so that when the official version comes out it's stable in a way so the more you contribute and the more you report the more apple developers are going to be able to deal with the bugs and issues so if you found this video informative in a way definitely do hit like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on more mac os 26 content that i have down in the pipeline my name is ben and i'm signing off